As we receive reports that Russian forces have reached an area just north of Ukraine's capital city, Kyiv, as they continue their advance into the country. This is video from social media today appearing to show Russian armored vehicles driving through the residential district of Obolon to the north of the city center. That area is just nine kilometers, that's five and a half miles north of Kiev's parliament, the presidential office and the city center. Authorities, meanwhile, have told residents there in Obolon to stay off the streets as they say active hostilities are approaching. Uh, we've also had reports of a plane wreckage after a Russian aircraft was reportedly shot down over Kiev last night. Several people are said to be injured. And martial law has been imposed across Ukraine, with men aged 18 to 60 barred from leaving the country. More than 100,000 people are thought to have left their homes seeking safety. Russia claims it has destroyed 80 military sites in the first wave of its attack. But UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace says around 450 Russian troops have also been killed. President Volodymyr Zelensky has pleaded with the international community to do more and has appealed to Russia for a ceasefire. He also said he would not leave Kyiv, even though he knows he is a target. Our first report this hour is from Sarah Campbell. This morning, the day after everything changed for Ukraine and for Europe, Russian tanks moving through the northern suburbs of the capital city. It followed a night when the sky above Kiev, a city of three million people, was lit up. Air defences appear to have shot something, possibly a missile, down. In daylight, the damage is clear to an apartment block where the debris fell. Safety now means going underground, metro stations becoming bomb shelters as Russia turns on its neighbour. And answering your question what to do about the desire of Ukrainians who want to go there or here, they should have thought about that from the very start, when back in 2008, President Putin at the summit of NATO, Russia and Bucharest, he warned them to think thrice the members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization before they state proudly that Ukraine and Georgia would be admitted to NATO. On Thursday, the full force of the Russian military was released. From the air came planes, helicopters and missile strikes. On the ground, tanks rolled across the borders to the north and to the south. From occupied Crimea seized eight years ago, Russia gained ground, as it did advancing from Belarus. The site of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster has now changed hands. Ukraine is on its own, President Zelensky warned. At 4 a.m., the Russian forces struck Ukrainian territory with rockets, he said. They say that civilians are not a target, it's a lie. The reality is that they don't differentiate between which areas to attack. An attempt on a lightning strike on Kiev appears to have been thwarted. An airstrip just outside the capital was captured by Russians arriving by helicopter, then taken back in fighting by Ukrainians later in the day. Having long believed that this was unthinkable, the streets heading west out of the capital city quickly filled with people desperate to leave. They may soon be crossing into the European Union. Under attack from the north, south and east, how long can Ukraine hold out? Sarah Campbell, BBC News.